Today we're going to take a look at flying cars and electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft at the Wings of History Air Museum. Do you like to fly, but you don't like to commute to the airport in traffic? Or once you've arrived there, you don't like to deal with the crowds or the security checkpoints? Well, what if instead you had a flying car that could take you door to door? Some science fiction movies depict a dystopian future that includes flying cars, but often it looks just as bad, if not worse, than what we have today. On the other hand, you have the 1960s uh, cartoon, The Jetsons, where George could take his family on a trip or use his flying car to commute to his job at Spacely Space Rockets. Let's look at the first example of a flying car at the museum. The security air sir, it's a bit of a stretch, to call this car, this plane that we have under restoration, a flying car. But uh, that's exactly what this 1930s newsreel did. Folding wings turned this airplane into an automobile. Kind of. Uh, indeed, the security airster did have folding wings. And in the newsreel, they depict a uh, this plane in a person's driveway, wings folded up. The pilot starts it up, taxis onto the street, down the street to the airport. When he gets to the airport, he unfolds the wings, locks them in position, and gets ready for takeoff. As I mentioned, this plane is undergoing restoration. Uh, you can come in and take a look at it. Um, this is probably the very last one built in the 40s. There were probably only about 20 built in total. They were not a huge success. Uh, this particular model has a rare... Um, security air stir, security uh, five-cylinder radial engine, probably only about five of those were built. So that's the first example. The second example we have is the Dobbins Simcopter. Now this is more of a flying car. Um, Dobbins was an interesting person, an interesting background. Uh, he worked at various uh, aeronautical companies. Um, at one point, his family moved to San Francisco. He loved helicopters, boats, etc. And in the 50s, they moved to Guadalajara, Mexico, where David taught Matt at an American school and worked on his Simcopter. He started with the 1948 Simca Topolino, combined it with a 300-horsepower Lycoming aircraft engine, and welded a structure to it to create a helicopter car. The result is the one and only Dobbins Simcopter that we have on display. In August 1957, he flew his creation to a height of four feet for five seconds, as reported by the local newspaper, the El Occidental. The Dobbins family eventually returned to San Francisco after four years, where he worked for Westinghouse until he retired. He and his wife moved to the Palm Desert while he continued to work on helicopters until his death. The Simcopter is a true one-of-the-kind aircraft at the Wings of History Museum. Maybe Dobbins was just too far ahead of his time. The technology didn't exist to create a workable flying car. So let's fast forward to today. The newest aircraft on display at Wings of History is the Kitty Hawk Heaviside. It is a single-seat electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft developed by the Kitty Hawk Corporation. It was first unveiled in October 2019 and was designed to be a personal air vehicle that could be used for short-range transportation. The Kitty Hawk Heaviside has eight tilting variable pitch electric propellers, two at the front and six at the rear of the main wing. In trials, it hit a speed of 180 miles per hour and flew more than 100 miles on a single charge. It is also a very quiet aircraft with noise levels as low as 35 decibels at an altitude of 1,500 feet, making it an attractive option for use in urban areas. The heavy side ha has two flight phases. The initial phase is hover, during which the aircraft is launched vertically via rear tilt rotors that provide the necessary lift for the vertical takeoff. In the second phase, the rotors tilt parallel to the aircraft's forward movement and provide the forward thrust. The heavy side was a significant development in the field of electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. It was one of the first EVTOLs to be designed for personal use and to have sufficient range for practical transportation. In September 2022, it was announced that the company was winding down, though their joint venture with Boeing, Whisk Arrow, would continue. In June 2023, Boeing purchased Kitty Hawk's stake in Whisk Arrow and Kitty Hawk ceased, to, ceased operations.
The age of commercial electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is almost here. There are over 200 companies currently competing to put the first EVTOL into commercial service. These include some big names such as Airbus and Boeing, as well as numerous startups. There are many videos on YouTube about these efforts, but today I'll just mention two of them. Joby Aviation in Santa Cruz, California, just got approval from the FAA for testing the first of its flying taxis that was manufactured on their actual production line. In addition, they signed an agreement with the U.S. Air Force where they will deliver up to nine air taxis to, the U- to them under a $55 million contract extension that marks the company's first revenue-generating operations. Joby will deliver the first two aircraft to Edwards Air Force Base in California by March of 2024 for field exercises that will help the Air Force determine whether to adopt electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Another another one that's interesting is the Aleph Model A. This looks most like the flying car we've been waiting for for the last century or so. It can drive on the street or fly in the air. It's advertised as the perfect solution to beating traffic on the morning and evening commutes. If and when the Model A becomes available to public, its starting price is set at $300,000. Thank you for listening today. To learn more about flying cars or anything else related to aviation, please visit the Wings of History Air Museum in San Martin, California.